May I get a roll call, please? Here comes Boster. Supervisors Grady and Decker are excused tonight. We'll give Supervisor Splitsky a moment to come in and get signed in. Tonight we have a presentation by Mr. Lou Molitor, who's going to talk to us about the Kenosha Area Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, Lou, for coming in tonight. Easy to put it out there. Absolutely. Well, good evening. Good evening. This is a great day to be in Kenosha County. It certainly is because we're in a really good place. There's a lot of good things happening because of a, a lot of um, uh, collaboration is being done by a lot of different organizations, elected officials, civic officials, nonprofits, you name it. I think of all the counties in the state of Wisconsin, we probably have the best communication and collaboration of many that I've seen and that I've heard from from other chambers. They're all kind of talking about Kenosha County, and that's that's good. That's why. I, it's always a great day to be in Kenosha County. My name's Lou Molitor, for those that don't know who I am. Uh, I'm the president of the Kenosha Area Chamber of Commerce. With the, the key uh, comment there is area. We are uh, a chamber that serves the entire county, not just the city of Kenosha. About 17% of our membership is outside of the city of Kenosha. Uh, in uh, west of the eye, uh, in Lake County, Walworth County, Racine County, and a few even in, in uh, Milwaukee County that are members of our chamber. We have approximately 670, 680 members. Uh, I came to the chamber, I've been with the chamber for nine years. So I started in 2008. Do you remember what 2008 was? That was a great time to start with the Chamber of Commerce. So, uh, However, we maintained our membership. We lost some, we gained some, even th through some of the bad times. And um, so right now we're at about 670 and pushing towards 700. Um, of course, most of you know that the chamber is located uh, in downtown Kenosha uh, in the uh, office, uh, these, um, the, uh, office uh, center down, it used to be Gatormson's over there, across street from the municipal building. And uh, we've been there now, well, probably uh, seven of the nine years that I've been at the chamber. Uh, my other chamber staff include uh, Emily Delabru, who is our members and event coordinator, Mike uh, Mertz, who is our graphic designer, and Nancy Perkins, who's, who is our receptionist. I put a folder uh, in uh, by each of us. Anybody doesn't have a folder? Did I miss anybody? I hope I got everybody. So, um, so I'm going to go over some of the stuff. I did not prepare a PowerPoint. Uh, I have this presentation that I gave to the Council of Governments. It's pretty much the same for some of you who were there at the Council of Governments. Uh, a few little other things to add, but uh, and then will be some time for questions and, and hopefully some answers also. Uh, the chamber cell, uh, is, is 100 years old. Uh, we were formed in 1916 by a, a name that you may recognize, Zelman Simmons. Uh, some of you may still sleep on his mattresses, although I know he sold that business. Actually, we were formed five years earlier as the old Kenosha Retail Association, which evolved into the Chamber of Commerce through Zelman Simmons and a few other uh, uh, business leaders at the time. The present-day chamber structure was formed in 1926 uh, by a gentleman named Ralph uh, Kingsley, who was the uh, editor of the first president of the chamber and editor of the Kenosha News at that time. Um, the chamber and its illustrious history helped bring Carthage College to Kenosha County, University of Wisconsin Parkside. We even helped uh, um, back in the 20s and 30s bring Snap-on to uh, Kenosha. So we were uh, involved in a lot of different things um, in the overall history of our great city and county. The mission of our Chamber of Commerce is basically to help businesses grow and prosper. Our vision statement is where people and business succeed 
and our mission statement is to provide opportunities to engage and connect our members with the greater business community. We feel that if we engage and connect our members with other businesses and the public, you know, they'll grow and prosper on their own. Business people, you know, it's not my job to, to necessarily bring customers to you and give you a deal. It's my job to put prospective customers in front of you and then let you go to work as a business person and sell your business. And that's where everybody has a chance to, to grow and prosper, so. Um, right now on our board of directors has 24 board members across all different types of business sectors, including manufacturing, small business, uh, healthcare, uh, civic construction and banking. Uh, we do have uh, a board member here, Steve Bostrom is on our board of directors. And also the county representative is uh, Doug Bartz from the Job Center. Um, uh, uh, we've had um, uh, Dave Gertson on our board. I know he's part of the finance committee for the county also, but he, he's not on our board now, but a good friend of the chamber. We have a seven member executive committee. Our chair is Chris Christensen from the village of Pleasant Prairie. Our incoming chair is Dr. Manaj Babu, who is the Dean of Business and Manufacturing at Gateway Technical College. Our past chair is Larry Nelson from Bain Nelson. And one of the things that uh, I found that at the Council of Governments uh, meeting that I went to that a lot of people didn't know is that we made a bylaw change a number of years ago that allowed each village president and township uh, chairman to be an ex-official member of the board of directors for the chamber. They're invited to every board meeting and they have voting privileges. Now, and since we made that bylaw change, I think the most we've ever had have been two. Uh, but everybody's invited to come, so. Um, so I know that uh, the representatives from Summers and from Bristol and from uh, when it was Silver Lake at one time came. Of course, Pleasant Prairie's always there because they have a standing position on our board. As far as our, um, in, in your packet there's a, a sheet that's called By the Numbers. i will just I'd like you to take a look at that because it does give you some uh, information about what the chamber does uh, since uh, last April, uh, a year ago April. You know, the number of events we've done. Uh, Spotlight on Kenosha County Business is a radio show that the chamber has that is a perk for a business person. For a very inexpensive fee they're able to get a number of commercials on the radio plus a 15 minute live interview, which a lot of business take advantage of. A uh, number of ribbon cuttings, um, walk-ins to the office, people that uh, um, call the office, a uh, number of attendees to Expo. I'm just kind of go going over number, a few of the numbers. I, w I do want to point out that the chamber does have a foundation and each year we do award a number of scholarships. Uh, last year we awarded $12,500 scholarships. This year we were able to award $15,000 in scholarships. Uh, five $3,000 scholarships to deserving graduating high school, uh, Kenosha County High School seniors. So that's uh, pretty exciting. We also are in, in a partnership with Herzing University where this year we will be uh, awarding at least two full ride, no expense uh, scholarships for either a business degree or an IT degree at Herzing University. So that's going to be kind of cool too. Uh, a lot of businesses don't have the ability to give a, a um, uh, educational uh, stipend or, or uh, any money to their employees for education. And this is a perfect uh, thing for somebody that in a business that has a key employee that like to get a degree and then they, they can possibly get one at Herzing. And from what I've been told uh, by our friends at Uline who employ a number of Herzing business degree uh, graduates, uh, they're very good and their quality of their education is very good there. So, so that's cool. A couple of our major events. Well, first of all, any questions about any of that information at all? Okay, great. Uh, some of our major events include the Kenosha Expo Home and Health Show. We just had our 26th year. Uh, we had over 5,000 uh, attendees, 140 vendors. Uh, we added a number of years ago the Kenosha Community Health Fair to that event and that allows uh, citizens to come in and grab uh, uh, medical information, have uh, no cost uh, screenings and blood pressure checks and so forth, um, carotid artery checks, all sorts of good stuff. And that, that's a, a great addition to the expo. We also have a family activity area which is sponsored by the Kenosha Noon Optimist Club 
which engages families um, to um, uh, participate. All, all the booths have some sort of an interactive event or activity there, and the kids get a chance to maybe win a bicycle or get some credits for a bicycle. I know a couple of you have been at Expo. I know, uh, Jeff, you've been there, and, and uh, Andy, I think you've, you've been there too. I know that. But, uh, so Expo is a lot of fun, and we hope to make the 27th year even bigger and better. And it, uh, we also have our annual meeting, and what I did when I came to the chamber in 2008 was, uh, you know, I looked at the annual meeting of the Chamber of Commerce, and it was uh, kind of a low-key event that didn't have a lot of um, class to it, to be very frank with you. So I wanted to upgrade that a little bit, so I made it into a luncheon out at uh, a couple of different places where we're right now, we're at Strawberry, the Club of Strawberry Creek, and I added a theme of bringing back a noted Kenosian to talk to the attendees about uh, how his or her roots from in Kenosha led to their notoriety in their, their current position. So I had Tony uh, Montuano, who was a famous chef. He won, I think, sixth place on um, uh, America's Top Shelf, and he's pre former President Obama's favorite chef. chef. And so he gave a nice presentation. Julie McCarthy is a uh, NPR correspondent that was like 16 miles away from where Obama bin Laden was killed. And she was the first female uh, uh, correspondent in Afghanistan, so she gave just a lot of a, a real heart-wrenching kind of a presentation about being in Afghanistan and being a, 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 a woman there. We also had, um, oh, uh, well, Daniel J. Trevante, but he wasn't the best that we've ever had. Steve will attest to that. We had Gus Gnorski. Some of you may remember Gus. I mean, these are all Knotians that have risen to some level of fame in their life and have come back and talked to us. So, And I may have a surprise for this year's annual meeting. I'm not going to announce it yet because it's not confirmed, but we'll see what happens. It could be a very exciting one. So, We also give the Best Place to Work in Kenosha County Award at the annual meeting. This is an award that uh, we take um, nominations from employees. The more nominations, the better. And uh, we have a committee, and we award this. We've awarded it for a number of years. Beautification awards to companies that have um, had some sort of addition or improvement in their property. Uh, may, some of you may have gone to um, Waterfront Warehouse downtown, where they took that old building and turned it into that nice uh, restaurant and, and bar. We gave them the award last year. Also, we award our scholarships, and the Chairman's Volunteer uh, Award is also given at the annual meeting. It's a signature event for the Chamber. Uh, many of you have come to our business after fives. That's one thing that the chamber, chambers throughout the country are, are known for. Ours are no exception. It's a monthly networking event. We have anywhere from 75 to 200 attendees, depending upon where it is. Um, I try to also network with some chambers from the surrounding area, like Twin Lakes or even Raymac, Union Grove, Burlington, even Antioch and Lake County, and try to do things with them, too have them come to our, our uh, Business After Fives and other events, because I have a strong belief that there uh, should be collaboration with other chambers. You know, the business is hard enough, and when you have the same people coming to all the Business After Fives, it, it's hard to get that sale. But if we can network with other chambers and bring fresh prospects into the game, then businesses can maybe get some additional uh, customers and better business. Uh, we just had our Regional Connections event at the Club of Strawberry Creek where we had 10 other chambers participating, so that was really nice. Uh, our Regional Connections event celebrated its 11th year this year. Um, and, and Regional Connections is kind of like speed dating, but with, with business commercial. You, go, you sit at a table and you get a minute to talk about your business, you go around the table, then you eat your, meal, your first course of your meal, then you switch tables to get a new group of people and do the same thing. So you actually give 30, 40 commercials. Uh, plus some networking before and after. And of course, the, the networking is what Chambers are all about. That's our mainstay, to network and put potential customers in front of you. We have a Kenosha Business Expo, which has uh, about 50 to 60 vendors and draws 100 to 200 people. That's usually in the fall this year. It's November, the beginning of November. I mentioned about our foundation and our scholarships. Our scholarships are funded by three main fundraisers, the Scholarship Golf Classic, which is coming up on June 12th for those golfers that are interested. We're taking reservations now. It's at the Country Club, Kenosha Country Club. 
Also, grill games. I hope you've been to grill games. It's, it's a fun event with barbecue and music and all sorts of good stuff. And all those proceeds go to the uh, Scholarship Foundation. And also the Great Kenosha Raffle, which is uh, at the Expo, where somebody could win a grand prize. I think last year we had a prize of $1,000 to a winner. And that was pretty nice. Some of you may have heard uh, me on the radio on Friday mornings. We have a spotlight on Kenosha County Business Radio Show. I mentioned that earlier. You get 20 promotions plus the, the, the live um, uh, interview, plus a link to the podcast, all for 200 bucks. I mean, it's a deal. You can't even get that many commercials for that kind of money. And um, many businesses uh, are making use of that benefit. Legislative breakfasts, we conduct at least one or two a year. The last one we had, we had a local focus with uh, uh, the mayor and the county executive and the uh, president, or actually there was somebody else from the village of Pleasant Prairie. And I believe we had um, a summer's representative at the last legislative breakfast. We try to switch from lo a local focus to a state focus to a national focus to give our members a, a, a good overview of what's going on in the political world. Number of lunch and learn and educational breakfasts, and of course I talked about grill games. Our seventh year, 10,000 people. If you're into barbecue, even just drive down there and smell it. It's really good, so, and you, you just need to, to participate in that. So, The major services that we provide, those are the events, and that seems like it's a lot. It keeps me busy in my job. But we also have all these services that we provide, too. Uh, grand openings and ribbon cuttings. You saw on your blue, red, white, and blue sheet, we do a number of those in, in a given year. We have a business directory that we print and hand out, including a local map of uh, Kenosha County. A new thing that we're doing this year is, is electronic certificates of origin. Chambers historically have been the source for certificates of origin for companies that ship overseas. Uh, many uh, destinations, especially in the Middle East and South America, will not accept shipments unless they have their bill of laden stamped by a Chamber of Commerce, uh, attesting to that what's on there was made in America. Uh, in the past, it always was a tedious kind of a thing where you had to you know, bring the uh, um, certificate of origin to the chamber, we stamp it, we sign it, then you got to take it back and process it. It took a lot of staff time. Uh, not just my staff time, but staff time for the business. We switched this year to electronic certificates of origin where uh, you can send us the uh, bill of laden and the manifest electronically. We stamp it electronically. It gets back to the business within 10, 15 minutes and then out to their destination within the hour. So it saves a lot of time, it saves a lot of money because you don't have the staff time. And um, companies are starting to catch on. It is the trend in the business world right now. Last month, Snap-on did 50 of them. So they had a good month for business, I think, in order to uh, need uh, 50 uh, certificates of origin. Also, Canal Manufacturing, Centresis, TicoMed, other companies that use this. So it's a new service that we offered that allows a chamber to get, have a great service for larger companies, and, and they're, they're appreciative of that. We have a chamber network, which is a small, intimate networking group of up to 16 to 20 people. Uh, information about that is in your folder, too. It's just a way to get smaller businesses to build on their customer base. We have an inventors and entrepreneurs group that meets once a month for budding uh, inventors, mostly inventors now, not so much entrepreneurs, but we hope to take those inventors who can you know, come up with a product and turn them into entrepreneurs, which is a little more challenging at times, but that's a good group. Uh, the chamber calendar where you and the public can put uh, events on there. Our collaboration with WIBIC, Wisconsin Women's Business Initiative Corporation. Uh, they um, are one of the largest micro lenders in the state of Wisconsin. They also provide a lot of educational classes for not only existing businesses, but for budding businesses. And they share our offices and we do things together. An ambassador group, Leadership Kenosha, which is, in my opinion, the uh, premier professional development program in, in Kenosha County. Um, we offer that we're going into our 18th year of Leadership Kenosha. We have an online blog that we can post uh, special events at various companies, uh, relocation uh, packets, uh, various methods of communication, the chamber planner and lowdown, legislative advocacy. But most importantly, we have a culture of doing business with chamber members and promoting other chamber members. Um, I'll give you a real brief example. Am I going too long or am I okay? All right. Um, it was really nice a couple of days ago before this yucky rain that we had, and my wife was out 
uh, planting the garden and she wanted to water the garden and she, she turned the spigot on and all of a sudden you know, it was kind of coming out real funny and I went outside to see how she was doing and I said, but that's not working, right? So I went downstairs and I had two inches of water in my laundry room where the spigot was above because it had burst. It was frozen. As soon as she turned it on, it burst. So who do I call? Well, a good chamber member, the dry guys, to come and fix my problem for me. That's the first thing that came to my mind. So we just try to keep it within the chamber uh, community. As far as community involvement, I sit on the Workforce Development Board. I'm also the president currently of the Downtown Lakeshore Bid, uh, which is the funding source for Downtown Kenosha, Inc., and I serve as a treasurer for that. The chamber is heavily involved in developing downtown. I personally feel and many uh, people, I think, in the community feel that a, a robust, thriving downtown is, is important for a robust, thriving county. Uh, and we hope to continue to build on that. Although there are so many, so many wonderful areas in Kenosha County that we have to inform our, you know, I, I, I really firmly believe that half of the population of Kenosha County don't, do not know that we have a world-class fishery in Lake Michigan. And we do, it's world class. You can fish in Lake Michigan like you, can, you, you, you can't fish anyplace else. And I'm sure there's spots in the county that people in the city don't know about too. So it's, it's that kind of communication and sharing of knowledge that we, we at the chamber try to do. We have a, uh, what we call a business and education partners program where we take up to 100 high school students and bring them to uh, Parkside, Herzing University, Carthage College, Gateway, Cadell Manufacturing, Bradshaw Medical, Ocean Spray, and, and a few other companies too, for a, either an hour-long class uh, over six weeks or an hour-long workshop and tour of the business in order to help that student make some decisions as to what they want to do when they graduate. Uh, not everybody wants to go to college. Sometimes going to uh, a manufacturer and making your 55, 60,000 a year, whatever you make, retire in 30 years and go up north and fish. That's, that's attractive to some people rather than maybe my job, you know, but that's okay. Although I think I like to retire and fish too, but that's another day's story. We give the teachers awards uh, for uh, Kenosha Unified at their annual uh, uh, meeting. I also sit on Speaker Ryan's business advisory group and we're involved with uh, Harbor Market. Um, the chamber is a member of Wisconsin Manufacturers and Commerce. I am actually the Southeastern Wisconsin representative for the Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce Executives, which is a Chamber of Commerce subgroup of the Wisconsin Manufacturers and Commerce. Now, the Chamber is not as political as WMC or as the, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, and we're members of the U.S. Chamber also. We, we do not take that strong right-wing stance as they do um, and do a lot of political advocacy, but we do ed try to educate our members of all the impending legislation about businesses, about business. So I get all the information if something comes up that should be brought to the attention of the Kenosha business community. Um, again, I, I will get involved in and handle that for our business members. And we all, I also participate in the Future Wisconsin Initiative, which is a talent retention program um, that's run through the uh, State Chamber of Commerce. So that's kind of the cha uh, chamber in a uh, nutshell, more than a nutshell, I guess. But um, so, does anybody have any questions about the chamber or any anything that I can answer for you? You know, our, our main task uh, in the economic development uh, scope of Kenosha County is to keep businesses here. You know, to help them thrive, to help them grow, to provide the infrastructure and the um, uh, services to all the big companies' employees. You know, you have a company with 100, 200, 400 employees. They need to have dry cleaners, they need to have restaurants, they need to have florists, they need to have uh, um, service stations and everything else. And that's what our job is, is to help the small businesses, help their businesses grow and prosper, keep them here in Kenosha County so that we can have what we have right now, a good place to live. It's a great day to be in Kenosha County. Thank you very much. We will move on to citizen comments. Please state your name and address for the record. Through 284 Street. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I have been to several of your meetings since last July. 
And I wanted to uh, come tonight and publicly say that it was truly a pleasure to meet each and every one of you um, over the course of the last nine months or so. And it was an even greater pleasure to get to know many of you quite well over that uh, period of time. Um, I just wanted to tell you that I will be forever grateful for your friendship, your kindness, your guidance, and your support in my endeavor to retain the Branch 7 bench. Simply put, thank you so very much. Thank you, Judge Meyer. Any other citizen comments? Citizen comments? Seeing no other citizen comments, citizens' comments are closed. We'll move on to announcements of the chair. We do have Hannah Sorensen here from Youth and Governance. She sits on the Human Services Committee. And I don't have any other announcements. Supervisor reports. Supervisor Alverman, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chairman. We had our facilities meeting last evening, so that's usually when I'll try to update you on ongoing projects, things that we've been, been doing on highways. I've been reporting on the, the large county uh, S and H, or county S project, but the intersection at S and H with the uh, uh, problem with the uh, overlay with the airport. Uh, we were able to have a very productive meeting with the uh, FAA, uh, all the all the uh, stakeholders in the in the project in April, and uh, we're working on a, a plan that looks as if we'll be able to keep this project moving forward. We've been moving forward anyway, but uh, to move it forward in a in a design phase that uh, all can work with the uh, County E Bridge in. Uh, over the Pike River in Summers is ongoing. A lot of you probably aren't familiar with the County W Curve in Wheatland, but that is uh, a fairly large project also, and that one is a uh, uh, federally uh, funded along with the county project and the uh, Wisconsin Department of Transportation is overseeing. That one will be going on in, uh, in midsummer. State 45 in Bristol, people that live over that way know about that all the way to the state line and 165 in Pleasant Prairie Gulf is uh, struggling somewhat uh, with the wet spring as, as is any business of uh, my own, uh, anything that does anything outdoors, garden centers. Uh, we are uh, uh, hoping naturally for the weather to break here. The uh, fish fry that uh, everyone was so happy with uh, has begun again at Pleasant Prairie. Uh, or not uh, at Pets, I mean, and uh, the uh, uh, trees for the um, reforestation at uh, Pets. The bids are going to be open, uh, I believe, the 4th this week. The uh, 90th anniversary for the parks, I've mentioned that. That's August 5th. It's an all-day event. Uh, with the uh, fireworks at the end. The beer garden at uh, Petrifying Springs is on schedule to open Memorial Day. Uh, facilities, fire alarm uh, in the courthouse is complete. Public safety building, second floor project. Uh, we are uh, uh, looking at uh, late May uh, start to the project. Courtroom Branch 4, June 12th, start to that project. And uh, the uh, uh, Brookside, that's the, the, the big thing that's been going on the last year and a half, is on schedule. Uh, we will be moving all residents on uh, the 17th of this month. We had uh, another example of really knowing and working the bidding system on these construction projects. Uh, if you remember last year, we talked about our successes in getting our, our mid-sized projects out early. A uh, uh, prime example was our roofing project out at the county center. And um, uh, getting these people before they get busy, getting those people also before the school is let out. If you remember in our budget, we were talking about <clears throat> the storage building at the uh, detention center. 
for all the sheriff's equipment and for everybody's uh, being able to uh, go through crime scene on, on the vehicles and things. And we had a, a, a budget of 1.7 million. Um, close to that uh, was uh, the estimate. And uh, we received our, uh, a bid that we have uh, validated at 1 million, uh, 1.16 million. So once again, our facilities people and their timing has really paid off because I mean, here we're looking at a $600,000 um, piece of money that can help us when we run short on other things as we did with the roof project last year. So a very successful bidding season for, uh, for facilities and for all our projects. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Alberman. Supervisor Dodge, you have the floor. Yes, Madam Chairman, fellow board members. I have a short uh, report on the committee meetings that I have attended. Uh, I attended the Mental Health, Alcohol and Other Drugs Committee meeting on April 19th. Uh, it was interesting, Alderman Jack Rose reported for NAMI, promoting the expansion of the care center. He thanked the county for expanding the hours of operation for the Bridges Community Center and stated the county Vivitrol program has been extremely effective. Jack supports the county's efforts in proactive programs such as our combined treatment court providing treatment rather than incarceration. Mental health diversion programs cost $14 a day. Specialty courts, that's your drug and alcohol behavioral health treatment court, cost $18 a day compared to the cost of incarceration, which is $76 a day, which is a substantial savings for the taxpayers. Um, the staff reported on pursuing grants for Narcan injection training, uh, grants for the Vivitrol program, and the intervention for opiate survivors. Milwaukee is reporting deaths now from what is referred to as a rhino tranquilizer drug, 100 times stronger than fentanyl. This is going to be a real threat. Um, yesterday, I attended a Brookside trustee meeting. Uh, we toured the facility. Uh, beautiful facility, and as uh, Supervisor Ullman said, they'll soon be moving the patients from the old facility over there while they remodel, and it'll be, um, for 90 days, they'll be doubling up the rooms, but um, it's, it is a, it's a beautiful facility. If you get a chance to get a tour, I would recommend it. I also chaired the Healthy People Kenosha Steering Committee on April 28th. Stacy Wins reported the Community Health Assessment Summary and the county health ratings. I have a very brief summary of that summary. Kenosha is 12% above the state in percent of population with adequate access to locations for physical activity. In violent crime, we are 82 lower than the state average in violent crime rate per 100,000 population. Kudos to our parks and law enforcement agencies. In vaccinations, Kenosha was 21% higher than the state average for flu vaccinations and 5% higher for pneumonia. On the downside, Kenosha has the worst rating for air quality. I think we all know that. Um, Kenosha is 8% above the state in excessive drinking. I guess we have a lot to celebrate. Um, and in closing, the top reported county health issue is illegal drug use. Thank you. That concludes my report. Thank you, Supervisor Dodge. Supervisor Gens, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I would like to report on joint services. Uh, we got our compensation study back. It was done by a company called Springstead, and we were not far off on the numbers. So it, we, we did budget. Uh, our, we were going to come in under budget on, on what we had set aside for that. So. Uh, that turned out well. If anybody wants a, co a copy of that, uh, we can get that for them. Um, our IT, we also, the next thing we did was we're putting out our joint services IT, handling of our IT out for an RFP. So that's going to be moving forward uh, as we enter in with our new system, which is a third thing I have to report on. We did have our go live starting at seven o'clock last night and it didn't blow up 
and we had no big bang or any funky stuff going on over there. So it was very good. I, I went over and I toured the, uh, the various departments and talked with the dispatchers and, and the people in the departments. And you know, short of just getting used to different keystrokes, I think they're all handling it very well. So I'm, I'm really proud of the staff over there. Uh, and I also want to thank all the agencies that put a lot of time and effort into getting that. That was years in the making. So um, this new system we have is going to be a lot better, a lot more efficient. But as with any change, it's going to take some time. Uh, we ran into no major problems, just, uh, just change, you know, going from Cisco to new world systems and, and just had those, those types of, uh, of issues. But uh, it all went fairly smoothly. That's all I have to report. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Gantz. Supervisor Holman, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just one thing. Uh, on Thursday morning at 8.15, and I will send you all the email on this, the NACO Central Region, which we are a part of, will be having one of their conference calls. Uh, the person who is our Central Re Region representative is Ms. Cindy Bobbitt from Oklahoma. Part of that agenda will include an update from Deborah Cox, who is the NACO Legislative Director, Jamie Richards, who is the Central Region Staff Liaison, who will talk about NACO presidential appointments to committees. Um, they'll go through steering committee membership for those of you who might be interested in participating in NACO, um, and they will discuss the presidential appointments for the first Vice President, Roy Charles Brooks. Um, seems to be quite a bit of items here. Transportation infrastructure is on the agenda as well. Um, and uh, let's see here, upcoming webinars. There's one on the 11th on mental illness in jails and one on May 15th, all health in local, the update on federal health reform efforts and why it matters to counties. So I can send this to all of you and you can participate as you see fit. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Holman. Seeing no other committee reports, we'll go ahead and move on. County Executive Appointments, David DeVito to serve on the Kenosha County Zoning Board of Adjustments. Refer to Planning Development Extension Education Committee. Matthew Fleming to serve as the Director of the Kenosha County Division of Purchasing Services. Refer to Finance and Administration. Captain Michael Rombalski to serve on the Kenosha County Traffic, Traffic Safety Commission. Refer to Public Works. Approval of the April 18th, 2017 minutes by Supervisor Berg. Supervisor Berg, have you had a chance to look at the revised minutes? that were sent out? No. Would you like to just approve them? <laughs> I make a motion to approve. I have a first by Supervisor Berg, a separate second by Supervisor Gilmore to approve the minutes. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion passes. I have a first to adjourn by Supervisor. I thought you did the first. No. Oh. First by Supervisor Kabicki, second by Supervisor Gable. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? We're adjourned. Thank you.